Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again, and I'm going to have a series of videos that will actually explain to you what these two boxes are. These boxes are aquarium and a stand from SCA Aquariums. And through the next few videos, I am going to be explaining to you how to set up an aquarium. It may be a little boring for people who have already set up aquariums, but it may help those who haven't. And we're going to set up a plenum. We're going to use a BCB, which means biosinosis clarification basket inside of a canister filter. So the next few videos are going to be reviews on the aquarium. It's going to be reviews on the filtration system I bought, other equipment that I have bought, uh, these are equipment that have been previously reviewed. Uh, some of them are going to get decent reviews and some of them are not. Uh, I'm not here to sell something, so I am going to be telling the truth about what I review. Um, a lot of the equipment I bought got good reviews, but I will probably not give it that good of a review. I have to look at things a little different than a hobbyist does. I look at things as an engineer. And as an engineer, I look at things that maybe the hobbyist would not see or foresee. So what I'm going to do is when I review something, I will critique it. And then I will either reverse engineer it for you so you can make it yourself. Or I will just tell you plain out, you can buy it cheaper somewhere else and it'll be just as good. Uh, I spent my hard-earned money on this. And why should I critique something and give it a good review when a manufacturer didn't give me it for free? So you're going to just get the honest truth from an engineer's perspective on how well it's made and can you make it yourself a lot cheaper. SCA Aquariums is an aquarium I've already had. It's in my previous videos. Uh, it was, that was a 60 gallon SCA Aquarium with Stan and uh, I will fill this particular aquarium with uh, autumn angels that I will be getting in Florida here. I will be going right down to the source, Watley's Discus, and uh, we'll get his advice on how many angels I could put in such a tank and everything else. Get the professional's advice. And so like my last video, people say your tank is overcrowded for that 60 gallons. Well, you know what? That's the advice of Jack Weidel. You know, that's their advice with the professionals in the United States. So if you don't like it, contact them and tell them you're a better professional than he is and let him know that he's wrong by recommending how many fish to have for an aquarium. But uh, since I don't think he's wrong, uh, definitely I will listen to his advice on stocking this with the number of fish he recommends, and I will be doing videos on that so everyone can see. Uh, for you out of Florida, you'll have to order your fish from him. Me, I can just drive down there. I think he's in Miami, and within a few hours, I could be down there, and uh, I could do some filming. I could pick up my fish, and then be home within a few hours instead of having them flown in, spending several hours boxed on a plane and everything else. Okay, so why did I buy something like this? This is 450 pounds of, of shipment coming in that you put it right here in my garage. Well, first of all, I've already owned one of these tanks, so I know they're a very decent quality for the price. There's always a price point. And you will have high-end aquariums like this. I consider this to be high-end aquarium, okay? You have your Red Sea, you have your ADA aquariums, you have your SCA aquariums, you have your CAD aquariums, and you have your water box aquariums. I'm sure there's more. Those to me are your high-end aquariums. They're going to be the ones that look very nice. Starfire glass, clear glass, thicker glass. Uh, they're going to have better silicone sealants, and they're going to look nicer, and they're going to be square. And the make of them is going to be a lot better than when you go into the low end. And, and I shouldn't say lower end, I'll put it that way. And 
If you look at aquariums that uh, like uh, Petco, PetSmart sells, you can get a 75 gallon tank for about 400 bucks. You get a stand, you can get the aquarium, and you can get a lid for 400 bucks. And on sale, you could buy that for half the amount. That's if you can even find one in stock by the time Christmas comes around, because there's people just biting at the bit to get those tanks at half price. But anyway, uh, I even looked at those. I'm going to be honest with you, I did. 75 gallon, why not? Look at two, 400 bucks, that's cheap. An 18 by 48 inch tank. Um, looked at the reviews. Do your homework, look at the reviews. Um, a lot of the reviews were bad. People complaining about them either cracking or leaking. And as soon as I read a few reviews, doesn't take many, two or three reviews and boom, that's it. I, I'm done. I'm, I don't want to risk spending $400 on an aquarium and having a thousand, two thousand dollars worth of damage done to my home. It's not worth it, you know? So in this case, um, here, I'd rather spend more money and get the higher end. And I know this is high end because I've owned one. But for those people who are just watching this and you're looking at Red Sea and all the other ones, this one particular maker, SC Aquarium, you get more bang for the buck. You're probably going to save 30, 40% or more on the equipment, on the tank. Uh, this is called a PNP, plug and play meaning they give you everything with it. SCA Aquarium will suit you. If, if you don't want a sump, okay, you don't have to buy it. They'll give you credit for it. If you don't want a protein, okay, don't buy it. They will customize it for you, the tank. If you want holes drilled in the side, not at the bottom of the weir, fine. You know, no hassle, whatever you want. They, they'll accommodate you. I kind of like that accommodation because for a freshwater aquarium, what do I need a sump for? I don't want a sump. I had a sump in my other SCA aquarium that I sold with the discus in it. Uh, don't need a protein skimmer. Might as well keep it for someone who needs salt water. And the pump, I still have the pump from my old aquarium from SCA. Why would I need another one that's gonna sit in the box? Doesn't make sense. So they gave me a credit on those things. Because of the credit, I was able to get I was looking at an 80 gallon. Why get an 80 gallon if I get a 90 gallon? <laughs> it, was a, it was a washout. The price is a lot better than some of the other high end aquariums. And you know, that happens the same thing with stereo stuff. In all honesty, that uh, you can get some very good high end equipment that costs a lot less than some of the other high end aquariums and still come up with great sounding equipment. That's kind of like what this is. It's, it's, the price point for what you are getting. Now, of course, there's other aquariums out there. They're going to give you uh, uh, a Schedule 80 piping or they'll give you colored piping. You don't need Schedule 80 piping. It's gray. You don't need that for an aquarium. There's no pressure. So, uh, and then, oh, they'll give you color piping or they'll give you very expensive $50, $60, $70 valves, which is good. You don't want to skimp there. Uh, but it depends on your application and this it's just fresh water it's never going to be a saltwater aquarium so i don't need that stuff why pay for something i don't need it's never going to be saltwater but it's there if i do need it now there's a few little things with this aquarium i'm going to show you just a little bit and this one on why i bought it uh i have no dog in this fight with the products I'm going to tell you about or why I'm recommending it or not going to recommend products that I'm going to be reviewing for you. Uh, I bought it because I myself do not want troubles in the long run in the very beginning of tanks splitting, cracking, leaking. Uh, I've seen too many videos of that. Uh, one guy had, I think it was a 40 gallon breeders, looked like a Petco one going off to work and the thing's leaking. It's a saltwater tank. You know, you don't need that garbage spilling all over a wood floor, warping your wood floor. Now you've got thousands of dollars worth of damage. If you can't fix it, you're gonna to have to hire somebody to come in and fix it. 
But the point here in Florida, you definitely don't want any kind of water damage or anything with water here in Florida because everything down here is moist and you'll get mold. Mold and mildew. So you definitely don't want stuff to get on carpeting and stuff like that. So in, in doing this, I will show you a little bit. I've already taken the plastic wrap. There are bands around here. It's all wrapped in plastic bands. I've already taken that off so I don't have to bother you with opening up a box. But we're going to get in. I'm going to show you a little bit in this video of the aquarium. Like I said, they deliver it. Oh, there's another thing. If you're going to order one of these, you, you order, I think it's $40 extra for a gate, a drop gate. Now, you're going to want that if, if you don't have, uh, if you're not in a factory or something where the trucks can pull right up, you're going to need a lift gate of some sort. They call it a drop gate because it drops down and then it will. And uh, the truck drivers come, put it on the gate. The gate comes down and comes to ground level. Unless you have a dock, which how many homes have docks, you know. Unless you have a dock, you're going to have to order the $40 to have the drop gate come so they can bring it down and they bring it on a, uh, you know, uh, pallet. They pump hand forklift is what they're going to put it on. The, and they just bring it right in and they drop it wherever you want. Like I said, once it's dropped, it's, this is very heavy. So you figure the pallet's about 50 pounds. So you're talking 400 pounds here that you have to deal with. So definitely I'm gonna to have to have help. I'll be looking at the equipment. I'm gonna need help moving it. And uh, like everybody else, these are heavy aquariums. Now, why did I order a 90 gallon? Now this 90 gallon aquarium is, is a, uh, 24 wide by 36 by 24. And we're going to get into why I ordered that versus uh, an 18 inch 75 gallon aquarium. Okay, I have opened up the box already for you so you can see it. So when you cut open the box, you have to be careful because this piece is sitting on top. This is an important piece that fits at the bottom of the aquarium. Some manufacturers will have this already glued onto the bottom of the aquarium. This manufacturer gives you this board here, and it's a foam board. And uh, I think they use this for signs and stuff like this. You could buy this at uh, Joann's Fabrics or the craft store. And this fits at the bottom. So you don't take your tank and put it directly onto the stand because this is a rimless aquarium. It has no rim around it, black rim, like you would other aquariums. There, uh, there is something that, uh, this is the way it came. It came, this was cracked, styrofoam, but the tank is fine. So I'll put this off to the side. Anyhow, um, why did I go with a tank like this? This is a 24 inch wide aquarium by 36 inches long by 24 high and i'll tell you right now most people when they get brand new aquariums they want to get their first big aquarium after they have their 20 gallons and 15 gallons 30 gallons they go with a 55 gallon 55 gallon aquariums are about 12 inches wide about 13 inches wide they're not very wide at all 55 gallon and uh you really can't aquascape very easily because they're not that wide and it seems like you just don't have enough room plus you don't have any three dimensionality with a 55. now when you step up to a 75 which is 18 inches wide now you have a little more dimension dimensionality where you can put stuff in rocks pieces of driftwood easier and cosmetically it looks a little nicer once you get up to your 24 inches and 36 inches, it even, it gets nicer. Uh, you start having dimension or 3D. You can have a 3D effect where you can have layers going into the aquarium where it looks a lot nicer than the little 
55 or 75 gallon aquarium. So this, this is a step up from owning those aquariums that most people wind up getting. And the width is great because of aquascaping. It just really helps with the mount because the distance between the wear and the wall is uh, 12 inches. That's about as wide as a 55 gallon tank. So you're really not getting all that much room between the wear and the wall of the aquarium as you think. Because basically it's just 55 gallon tank wide. So this gives you plenty of room from the front to the wear. Now, you're probably thinking, why did I buy a freshwater aquarium with a wear? Well, you can hook up wares to freshwater aquarium and they really work out well. Believe it or not, wares are not just for saltwater aquariums. After this video is done, you'll, you'll realize that, hey, that's a great idea. That's something I want. Because you can connect this up to a canister filter and get all the same effects you need. And we'll put valves at the bottom up that will turn off and on so you can disconnect your canister filter, take it to the sink. But the thing about the SCA aquarium is the wear and the aquarium are separated. So if the aquarium were to empty, the wear would be full of water. If the wear empties, the aquarium is still full of water. These are two like different entities. So the only way to get water in there, they have slits at the bottom. I don't know what good they are, but they have slits at the bottom and they have slits at top. So we are going to set this up for a canister where we, we will literally be skimming off the surface. And if you think about it, a lot of people are buying extra skimmers for their canister filters that they put on to the intake and they have a float. Well, I've used those and I didn't like them because snails cause those to have problems. There's other problems when a leaf sticks up to the side of it. Uh, they start making all kinds of noise and there's nothing worse than waking up at three o'clock in the morning to a noisy aquarium and you got to fix it. And it doesn't give you the, uh, the versatility of like going on a vacation for a week because they can clog up and you constantly have to look at those. If you have a wear, you're not going to have that problem. So this pipe right here, which they give you, is the one that goes in the center. And this is for your outlets. You have two outlets. You got a hole already put into the PVC, the, the acrylic here and here. And this is what they give you. It's already made. It's already been, comes apart both sides and that's already done for you. They gave me this. This is if you're going to have a, a, a sump. This aquarium does not have a sump. Of course, I didn't order it with the sump. I didn't order it with the pump and I did not order it with the protein skimmer. That's a good thing about SCA. You uh, can custom order. If you don't want to wear and want your holes in the side, they'll do that. Wh whatever you want. They're, they're more of a custom place. Well, another thing I got, I think this is like 30 bucks is a top for this. And the reason I got a top is my last SCA aquarium in my older videos, snails would crawl up there and go down in there. And this will prevent snails and fish from jumping inside here. Believe me, it's something that you find out too late or you're gonna to have to make yourself something or put a piece of glass up there. I just had them do it. It's an extra cost to have this done, cap over it, but you know what? It's well worth it. It's going to stop snails. It's going to stop fish from jumping into your wear. Well, well worth it. Unless you can build it yourself, then don't buy it. They, they give you this because there's three holes at the bottom of here already pre-drilled to cover up one of the spare holes if you want. You don't have to use that. One thing they will give you, they will give you two of these. And these are your outlets. They go right on the sides up here. And these are the, your duckbill ones. But you can change these. I did on my other aquarium. If you don't want to use these, you can put in anything you want. But this is what they give you with it um, to, for your outlet. And usually I put the outlet in the center and the two holes on the side 
those are going to be for strainers and they also will give you this they'll give you the strainers you have you should have three of them yep yep you got three of them in here and let me show you this is what they give you so when we connect this up to the bottom which I'll be showing you how to connect this up now I've watched a lot of videos on how to connect these up and trust me you've done it enough times they're doing it wrong I have not seen one person maybe I haven't seen every video out there do it right I'm going to show you how to do this so it will not leak no matter what too many people they take it they put it in their sump they they open it up they put it in there the gasket no that, that's not the way to do it you're, you're asking for trouble in the future this thing's going to start leaking on you that's not the way to do it that's not for long term um, they also give you this so actually I'm going to have a strainer on both sides and I'll hook them up together to go to the canister filter which is good because if anything gets in here like a leaf or anything and blocks up one of these you're still going to have another one at the bottom because this is going to be taking the water in these will be sucking the water out of the wear into your canister filter and of course you will have your return line on either side blowing the water back into the aquarium so um, some of the other high-end aquariums like uh, Red Sea and stuff like that, they will um, have something a little different, or they may have a different setup. The wear and the tank are two separate entities. So I like that a lot because if this empties, your tank won't empty. It won't keep sucking water from your tank. If your tank empties, this won't empty. Well, that, a lot of good that's going to do you though. But so all these what I consider high-end aquariums, the Cade, Water Box, ADA, Red Sea, all these high-end aquariums like this. This is one of them. Um, they all make an excellent aquarium with Starfire glass. Now. One thing about this that we're just looking at right here, you can see that inside the wear they have glass inside here. This is all glass. And then they put the plexiglass on side and they glue it. This plexiglass is on the side. Um, the glass has been beveled and polished. It's kind of weird that you would go through so much trouble for a wear to put the glass beveled and polished. The top glass here has been polished and beveled and you can tell even on a simple thing like the wear you're not getting no cattywampus td rocker here so you know everything is a level and that's kind of unusual that's that would just be what you're paying for but if you if you have a td rocker like this and you're pressing on it these aren't even but they went through the trouble where Look at this, no TD, sits flat. And that's the same with these edges. They sit flat. They're, they're no, no edge is higher than the other edge. And that's real nice. But these are all been polished and they all been, they're not rolled and polished. They are polished just with a polished bevel on both sides of the aquarium. So no matter what, you're not going to cut yourself putting your hand in there or anything else. They also give you three tubings. This is for the bottom. Okay, like I said, I have no sump. Didn't need one. Didn't need the protein skimmer and didn't need the pump that came with it. But they still gave me the tubing in case I want that. Um, and they give you some clips for the tubing. These are plastic. They used to give you stainless steel. Uh, the stainless steel clips that they gave you, they, um, they weren't the best of the stainless steel clips. Let me put it that way. They rusted. So they were a very low grade stainless steel. They rusted. So I see now they give you these plastic clips and you just squeeze them together for how tight you want it. And they work okay, but for 
What I'm going to do, I'll probably just buy some good American-made stainless steel clips. But basically, that's it. And I got a light. I will go into the light later. We'll set that up so everyone can see that. Like I said, every piece of equipment here is going to be evaluated for you. Everything that I bought extra for this aquarium is going to be have a review on it. Um, I'm not telling you everything's going to be a good review, okay, but it will have a review and an honest review for your money. So this is the aquarium. We'll see more of it as I get it out. Now let's take a look at the uh, stand, a little bit of the stand. Now we're going to get into a little bit of the stand. The old stand that I had on my other SCA aquarium was black. They come in different colors, mahogany, black, white. Uh, I got more of like a, a rustic stand. This is the stand, I, it's 36 by 36 by 24. So you, it, it's great to have a 36 by 36 by 36 aquarium. I think it's great, but the only problem with a tank that big is you can't get it through none of your doors. So you're subject to 24 inches or 30 inches for some of your doorways. So just remember that if you decide you want to go with a 36 by 36 by 36, a lot of doorways don't accommodate a 36 inch wide aquarium stand. So this particular one is the one I ordered here. As you see, it's got a got a little bit of a uh, mm, green. I don't know if you could see this, but it has a little bit of an edge here. Okay, a little bit of edge down here. That edge is to hold that black piece of of uh, boarding that they give you. The board that has the uh, uh, styrofoam in it, and it's black on either side. Um, I guess they call that a craft board. Anyhow, that's what this edge is for. Now, my old stand did not have this edge. Believe it or not, when you, it was just flat. So when you put the board down and you put the tank on top of it, you could see the white of the board. And you would have to uh, use like a black magic marker or something and mark out the white of the foam that's on there. But I see now they make this just low enough so when you put that black board on top of here, then the aquarium, it will cover that board and your, then your tank will go on top of it. So that's something nice that they do now versus to, oh, what they used to do. Another thing is they give you a hole here. This is where your three holes are going to be and your wear is going to be. So the reason the board does not have the cutout in it, because like I said, these can be customized and you may not have any tubes or anything are aware so you'll just put the board on top covering this up why would you open up that that craft board to this size opening but what you do is you put the craft board on you get exacto knife you just cut it we'll go through that when i go with the videos now as i'm looking at this um i see that the these have radiuses in that's nice normally if i were to cut this it just would have been straight corners but I see they actually have a radius built into these corners. That's just something extra, which uh, I wouldn't have thought they would do. But let me tell you something about this. This is waterproof. In other words, if you spill water on it, it's not gonna saturate into the wood. It's not a really um, piece of stained wood with like polyurethane or something on it. It's not that. This is a... Uh, this is more uh, something that is, I don't know, like almost like a contact paper, if you want to call it that, where it's thicker than normal contact paper, has a grain to it. My last one was the same way. The only thing of it is, here I'm looking at the inside of this, and I'm going to tell you this right now. My last one had this inside and outside okay but it looks like from what i'm seeing 
as they actually gave this a clear coating of something inside the aquarium bottom, which we'll get more into that. Uh, that's something I just noticed. I could see the shine from here. And you can add, you can paint the bottom if you want or whatever. But mine used to come that way. But I also no noticed something with the wood that they're using. Just to give you a little hint with the wood that they're using. It doesn't look like cheap wood. It doesn't look like your, your, um, your roofing grade of plywood. This plywood is a better grade. I don't think it's a marine grade of plywood, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's got over eight layers, eight plies in there, which is better than particle board. Some aquarium stands, they're making out of particle board and then they just put a cover on them. Those are really no good because if they get wet, that particle board just starts coming apart where it seems like the plywood holds up better if it does get wet. But we'll see because it looks like they may have put a sealer on the bottom. So if that bottom does get wet, it's got two doors, not one door. Um, I don't know what kind of the hinges. They look like they used to have very nice European hinges. These hinges don't look like they're European hinges on this particular cabinet. So they changed or cheaped out, if should I say, of the hinges from what I've seen. We'll get into more of that when I get more into the aquarium. So it looks like the stands have changed a little bit and they've changed a few things and I'm going to have to say they've uh, cheaped out on some things that my old aquarium had to this one. European hinges, it doesn't look like it has them. Uh, the whole entire tank had this inside and outside. It doesn't look like it has it on the inside, so they saved money there. Uh, I don't know if it's just because it's a bigger stand. They do have options of all kinds of different stands that you can choose from. You can go up from here, but I will say just by looking at this particular stand, uh, it does have a sealer on the back too. It looks like a sealer of some sort, but it doesn't look like it's cheesy plywood at all. And from what I'm looking at, it looks like a uh, cabinet grade. So it's, it's a cabinet grade plywood, the same they would use for, uh, let's say stereo speakers. Okay. So that's what it is. It's more of a cabinet grade plywood. Um, so if it's, I guess is it good enough for stereo speakers and I guess it's good enough for the aquarium. We'll get more into this stand, but that's what I'm seeing. The stand has been reinforced. I could see they put reinforcement here, been glued. I don't know if it's just been stapled. I don't feel any staples. It may just be glued. I don't see any staples in the back here. Uh, no, I don't. But I know that this top um, may not even be plastic. I'm thinking they could have coated it. But I know that these, this is very good. Water won't penetrate it if water does get on it. But the wear goes here and you'll have your three holes so you can work from the bottom and you can put your canister in there and I'm going to show you how to hook it up. So we're going to go step by step on setting up this aquarium. I'm going to show you how I'm doing the plenum. Uh, so this ought to answer everybody's questions about how to set up an aquarium with a plenum, how I'm going to set it up and how the canister is going to be set up. I hope this will answer everybody's questions. So until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you for watching.